Sonic the Hedgehog and Triple Trouble. Hey, just like the game! I hope this is the comic spin on it. Spoiler alert, it's not. Well, I was suspicious of that from the start, since we haven't seen the Sonic 3 and Knuckles comic adaptation yet. And obviously, Triple Trouble was released after it, so... Still, this title sucks in retrospect. Fine at the time, though. How did Eggman manage to miss that horribly with a dart so many times? Earlier, I was expected to believe he could beat a swap bot into the floor without hurting his fist from hitting metal, and now he suddenly is back to normal human levels of physical competence. The first panel is pretty generic, could be the start to any issue, really. Any issue with this design of Robotnik, anyways. How has this random robot done nothing but fail him? We don't have any context for this. And another obnoxiously unneeded breaking of the fourth wall. What does he even mean by limited series anyways? And I think I should give up by now on commenting about how stupid it is that we're expected to believe that Eggman takes being called fat by his robots as something other than an insult. Because it seems like this is going to be happening a lot. Oh, good, I thought I was going to destroy him. That would have been unnecessary. Oh, he got coconuts to destroy him. Never mind. Coconut sees the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog robot, so I've heard. I didn't know his coconuts were explosive. They didn't look explosive in the games. I thought they were just regular coconuts. So how fast is Sonic running here? Is Tails able to run at the speed of sound yet, or close to at least? I'm saying this because I want him to be competent, finally. I do like that... That he's training Tails to be faster, though, it's, I guess, an explanation for why he gets faster later. That coconut robot looks so much like a Mobian rather than look like an actual robot that it's disturbing, actually. It makes me wonder if he's a robot, and therefore okay for Sonic to smash to bits, or if his attacking him would be just as bad as hurting an innocent Robian. I like his design in some sense, but the confusion over what exactly he is makes it uncomfortable. The way they defeat coconuts here is really amusing, actually. They play a hot potato with the explosive coconut and end up blowing him up. It's really charming to look at. And they introduce Scratch and Grounder and silhouettes here. If this is what a typical episode of Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog is like, I think I might somewhat like the show if it weren't for the terribly unsuited voices for the characters and the cringy art style. Because I like them playing with, like, coconuts there. But yeah, they introduce Scratch and Grounder. Let me guess. Scratch and Grounder argue the whole time. Okay, I'm getting really annoyed by this already. And this is just one issue! How can people stand watching them argue all the time? Won't the heroes overhear them arguing and wreck their plans as a result? Three pages in, that's another fourth wall breaking that's totally worthless. Basically, these guys are looking for Sonic. I, I really like how Sonic is hanging out with Tails here, spending quality time with him. So far, I've gotten the impression that he barely hangs out with him at all. Probably because we only see him doing hero stuff, and he thinks Tails can't help him in that. So Tails is usually out of focus, being told to wait at home. So it's good that we have stories like this to make it clear that Sonic actually spends time with him instead of being a horribly neglectful absentee parental figure. It's sweet! Wait, Sonic got a How to Track a Hedgehog book published? Huh? That was random. I guess that was a joke? But how could he get something published in a dystopia like this? And another fourth wall breaking joke. What's the point of letting the reader choose what Sonic says? This is a comic, not Mass Effect. This is just patronizing. Anyways, Sonic defeats the robots from behind while they're distracted arguing. I hope they get scrapped. Oh, this is pretty dark. They choke Sonic with a rope and drag him around. Yeesh. But then, of course, their tedious, obnoxious arguing over ego-stroking happens again and lets Sonic win. This plot is so predictable. Why the hell did Eggman program robots be able to turn against each other? Are these robots sentient enough to be able to form rivalries with each other? If this is how every episode of the show goes... I mean, I guess... Maybe it's missing visual slapstick and stuff, but it's a visual medium. They could still do slapstick. It just wouldn't be in motion. Sonic has a creative use of his powers, where he creates a deep fissure in the ground around him with a tornado blue wind that buries him in the dirt. And there's something I'll always love the comic for. It's the sheer amount of creative ways that Sonic can defeat his enemies. Because nothing would be more boring than Sonic just defeating all of his enemies by jumping and spin-dashing into them. 
And Sonic has a pretty charming, snarky remark against Eggman at the end. Well, if it wasn't for the annoyingly annoying Scratch and Grounder, who never should have existed, I would have liked this. I can at least say that I loved the coconuts part. It mostly because it was cute seeing Tails and Sonic working together. But the, yeah, this definitely doesn't convince me to watch the show. Now for another story, and this one is rather unpopular. Sonic has never seen a cluster of rings on movies before, really? Don't we always see a whole bunch of clusters of rings in all the games? And granted, this isn't the games, but still. Flip the comic book or it'll hit you in the face. I fucking hate that. So Sonic seems to have been sent. Oh, it's like the cluster of rings was an inter interdimensional portal. Why was that even there? Basically, Sonic interacts with some quirky people with no personality other than the fact that they're joking about how from certain perspectives they're vertical or horizontal to him. What is this place? There's no solid ground to stand on. How do these guys get enough to eat? Or drink? Where did they go to the bathroom? Did they come here really recently and that's why they're still alive? I want to know more about this dimension. I want to know more about these characters, their backstories. But instead I don't, and it's random. That's the whole problem with this. Sonic confusing them of working for Robotnik, despite them being from a completely different dimension, is really making Sonic look paranoid. I get it, his life pretty much revolves around fighting Robotnik now, but has it really damaged his psyche that much? Why does Sonic think that these guys could help the Freedom Fighters? Like, just because they're not with Robotnik? Like, is he- it makes it sound really desperate, and it comes out of nowhere. This entire story was just pointless and unsatisfying. It at least introduces the concept of there being other wacky new dimensions in this universe, which is really important later on. But nothing would have been lost if the comic- But nothing would have been lost if the concept was introduced in a better way later. And these characters just come off as dicks who don't bother to explain their uninhabitable dimension to Sonic, building intrigue just to have no payoff. When I see a new, weird dimension, I don't want to have jokes that aren't funny over and over again. I want to have actual explanation. These characters break the fourth wall by asking writers to write in if they want to see them again. And obviously we don't see them again, and so way later in the comic we're in their jail. Karma. I'm not sure what they did wrong. I do find it oddly satisfying seeing Antoine I do find it oddly satisfying seeing Antoine chased angrily by Sonic, despite normally hating him being bullied. I could watch this all day. Although it's annoying how he apparently made a pun on what's up, despite not knowing what just happened to Sonic. They shouldn't have highlighted up there, they're just treating the audience like idiots thinking we need that to happen to get the joke. Which is about as bad as explaining the joke. And Antoine obviously wasn't making the pun on purpose, but this confusing design makes it look like he was. Foiled again is also completely worthless. So basically, Sally and Rotor dickishly slap Sonic in the face with a foil to put his image on a page. Well, better Sonic have slapstick done to him than him bullying Antoine again. Sonic portrayed as cool enough already, so it's nice for him to get slapstick for once. And I'm guessing they're doing this to make a whole bunch of comics about him, considering all the papers he somehow got in their hiding from Robotnik underground lifestyle. So basically, I'm expected to believe that Freedom Fighters make comics about Sonic and give them to the people in that hole to boost morale. Boosting morale with fictional stories about him. Make a living? Does Sonic make money off these? Do people even have money to pay him? So yeah, this was just pointless and confusing. And here's another story where Sonic cleans up litter from yesterday's Freedom Fighter parade that they somehow did without Eggman spotting them outside or hearing the loud commotion that a parade would require or seeing the giant crowd and arresting them. Okay. So he cleans up litter, he repairs a wall broken from an invasion of Eggman to the base that somehow didn't have horrible consequences, and he delivers newspapers, which they somehow have in the dystopian future where they're hiding from Eggman, all in two minutes from using his sonic speed. Like, nitpicking aside, I genuinely do enjoy seeing the various ways in which sonic speed improves his mundane life. It's nice to get greater perspective on what having Sonic Speed would be like for him. It helps him come alive as a character more. I know this comic's also a waste of time, but I prefer to think of it as downtime, 
where, they, where we see more into the daily life of Sonic and his friends, humanizing them, make it, make it easier to believe in their situation and lives, as opposed to just seeing them fighting Eggman non-stop all the time. Is Sally cooking eggs? I guess it wasn't established yet that Sally sucks at cooking. Or is it that she's at least good at cooking eggs? It makes sense that she's not impressed by Sonic here because she's probably used to his Sonic speed by now. I mean, it's been over a month. So for the most part, issue 2 in general bothers me. I started out loving it because of Sonic and Tails working together to cleverly defeat Coconuts and it just went downhill from there into completely pointless and annoying territory. It's bogged down by having too many short, pointless stories at the end, rather than letting its main issue be long enough to be fully satisfying. And if this is how Scratch and Grounder interact in the actual show, then I can imagine I would hate it because just one issue of this repetitive, annoying arguing is unbearable. Why the hell would Eggman's robots be able to interact like this? It doesn't help that, until this point, We've never seen his robots rival each other in our problems because of that at, at all. So this comes out of nowhere and just leaves me frustrated at Eggman's stupidity. And it doesn't help that Sonic defeating these robots because of their stupidity isn't impressive. It doesn't make me impressed with the hero. It's more like he has a lucky break. The story Vertigo a Go-Go, at least, was written by Michael Gallagher. I don't know who wrote the other stories because I couldn't find his name anywhere in the rest of them. I hate the fact that it's so hard to find the names of the writers in these comics. You'd think there would be an entire credits page for that. Maybe I should just assume the entire comic for, like, all issues, all the episodes in it were written by the only writer I could find mentioned in it. 